VRM dropouts around 5.3 gigahertz. However, repeating testing with Intel 10850K, basically no problems at 5 gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz across the board. Added a lot more active cooling to the motherboard, tweaked some settings, I was able to dial it in, but the VRM implementation on this motherboard is uh, probably at the weakest point if you're going for that maximum extreme overclocking. If you're going to build this in a reasonable system with a reasonable cooling solution, i.e. you're not spending more than $300 on your CPU cooling solution, the VRMs here will be fine for your use case. Finally, at the rear I.O., we've got our Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.1 solution. Yes, that is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 solution. HDMI out for our onboard video. A clear CMOS button that's built right in in the little recess. We've got two USB 2.0 connectors. We've got two 10 gigabit USB connectors, one type A and one type C, two USB 5 gigabit connectors, and our Realtek 2.5 gig LAN. For the audio implementation, it is a Realtek ALT1220 based codec. It has Michigan Fine Gold audio capacitors. It seems to be a pretty reasonable impl implementation of gold plated connectors with optical SPDIF out. The measured signal to noise ratio by taking a cable from the input and going into the output and running some software was about 121 dB signal to noise ratio, which is not the best, but also not the worst. It's pretty good for onboard audio. Of course, the memory implementation is four slot at Z490. There's not really anything special there. It does support up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. The fastest memory that I have is DDR4 4000, and it's only 64 gigabytes. That was stable on this motherboard, however. I'm not sure that this motherboard would be able to push really high clock speeds with DDR4. So it does support XMP 2.0 and up to 128 gigabytes of memory. There may be some memory speed limitations if you're going to go for those insanely fast memory kits. But again, most people who are going for that really aesthetic build, they're not pushing the maximum DDR4 clocks. So any kind of reasonable and standard uh, DDR4 clock is not going to be much of a problem on this board. DDR4 3200, 3600, 3800. I feel like that's your safe range for DDR from testing this. I did test a 128 gig from, uh, kit from G-Skill, that's a G-Skill Trident Z. That is only a 2933 kit, however. It was stable on a 14 hour Memtest 86 burn-in test. Uh, so. Maybe one other thing that I might have liked to see on this motherboard is more USB 3 ports at the rear I.O. We've really only got three, four if you count the USB-C connection. And that's, I'm not sure enough in this day and age. However, the rear I.O. shield is built in, which is a nice feature to see. So here you can see the snap-on removable covers for our M.2. The most surprising feature here is that there's not really a thermal interface between the, you know, the cover and the M.2. If it were me, I would have made this all one metal piece instead of a combination of metal and plastic. I actually used the cover as a kind of heat sink to dissipate heat. So I think if you're going to use an M.2 in one of these positions, that you should run it without the cover. The M.2s that I tested in this are a Corsair MP600 and a Sabrent uh, Rocket QLC 4TB. Uh, now the Sabrent Rocket is coming with its own review, but I was kind of surprised. It's got its own built-in heatsink, and in the top slot here, even with the cover on, the Sabrent did not overheat. I have another uh, Fison-based PCI Express 4, but not really. Uh, microcontroller, and even though it was operating in PCI Express 3 mode, without the heatsink, you know, the MP600 is a, a very similar setup with the Fison, and it's got a built-in heatsink, so obviously I didn't take that out. But running the <laughs> the Fison with no heatsink and the cover on, uh, it was not in the happy zone. Um, Samsung also, uh, Samsung SSDs, also not in the, in the happy zone, according to Samsung's own magician software. However, the Rocket NVMe was fine. So I guess it just depends on if your, your NVMe cares or not. So I think the safe thing is just be aware of that and be aware that you know you, you may not want this cover. The Fison without the cover with the GPU here and some fans and stuff was basically okay. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this kind of a build. And remember with Intel, you know, all of your M.2s are going through the chipset. So if you're gonna run an M.2 RAID or something like that, you don't really benefit from speed because you get that chipset bottleneck. Um, to worry about when you're doing that. So, overall, though, not bad. Now, in terms of Linux support, well, there's no NGXT CAM support for Linux, but since it's a USB device, you can run Linux Windows in a virtual machine and then access your CAM devices that way. Everything else on Linux pretty much worked. I mean, the USB controllers all worked, the audio worked. There wasn't really anything special I had to do for front panel audio because sometimes that can be kind of sketchy. So, overall, the Linux support on this motherboard, A. Now, 
if I were to give you a conclusion or a recommendation, you're buying this motherboard for the aesthetic. Most of the other features are secondary. You also, you know, got to take into account price. It's actually a very reasonably priced motherboard for what you get. It's not the highest end Z490 motherboard. It's not an overclocking monster. It doesn't have an inspiring number of USB ports, but it is well built for what you get. It has good quality construction, good craftsmanship. There are some metal components here. I mean, NZXT is kind of fighting an uphill battle, you know, partnering with a, a motherboard company to bring their aesthetic to life, part of their build service, part of their, their custom builds. Now, this motherboard does look good inside a case. I mean, but that's, that's an aesthetic judgment, not a functional one. Overall, though, in terms of uh, features that you get on a Z490 motherboard, it's not bad. It's a Z490 motherboard. And like I say, NZXT sent me this motherboard, but my CPU that I use for testing an Intel 10850K, the case, all of the other components I bought, most of them I think at Micro Center, maybe a few from Newegg or Amazon. And the reason I do this is to help make sure all this stuff works on Linux. I mean, a company will ask me, he's like, hey, do you want to do a motherboard review? And it's like, mm, yeah, but then think about Linux compatibility. Somebody might run Linux on this. It's like, all right, I'll check it out for Linux compatibility reasons, no problem. And I'll do a video on it, because why not? So there you have it. That's the NZXT Z490. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you pick up one of these or you do a build, or especially if you use NZXT's build service or something like that, go to the level one forums. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Post pictures and let us know how you're doing. All right, I'll see you there.